Right, so welcome to the 12th lecture on uh, random processes. Um, we have started our journey into random processes, right? So, uh, mostly what we have been doing before the last lecture, we already entered the random process, but before that, we have been talking about the random variable, right? And then sometimes mentioning uh, what it is based on, the random mapping and all that. Sometimes mostly skipping it, yes. But then we talked about the states, the values it can take. Is it representing something that is continuous, temperature, time? Or is it representing something that is discrete? Number of people, number of mobiles, things like that. Yeah. So discrete, continuous. Random variable. <clears throat> and now we have started our journey into adding a new parameter here, which made it now a random process, right? And this was the time index. Doesn't have to be time, again, it can be distance or anything else. What we mean to say is that it is indexed by something other than <coughs> just one value. Yeah, multiple values are there. And when this guy came in, it also could be discrete or continuous. So now we had an issue. We were calling this discrete continuous. Now this is how do we distinguish. So from here on, we, as we said last time and we saw the cases, when we are talking about the values x takes, we will say they are state, discrete state. It can be in what state? It can have a value of 10, it can have a value of 11. When it has it, that would not be talking about. What value it has? Are they discrete? These are its states. Discrete states, continuous state. With that, we could <coughs> call it discrete time or continuous time or some literature just says discrete or continuous random process. process. Yeah? Discrete state random process, continuous state random process, discrete time random process, continuous time random process. You can make how many combination? Four. And last time we saw an example of each, yes? That was just to give you an idea of how this is, uh, or each of these is possible. And <coughs> when we were just working with the random variable, yes? What did we talk about? Collecting its distributions, uh, sorry, collecting its um, probabilities in some way, and there we had the density distribution functions, uh, cumulative distribution functions, and those, yes? And so we talked about, let's say, PDF, CDF, those things, and then we went to the moments for this guy, yes? And then we focused a little bit more on the moment that was between two random variables, the covariance and such, and independence between them. Now the same path we will follow for random process with this now included and we will see okay how do the PDF, CDF, we will just talk about one of them I think, generalize to multiple random variables. You have already seen the bivariate case, yes? so that sets the template but let's now write it completely general. Similarly you will see okay for the case of a process what would a moment mean or should it mean something? Now, what would a variance mean? Would it remain one value or would it have to now be a function of time? Yes, the variable is function of time. So can it be that we need to make this thing a function of time? Also, we will see that. And then that we, uh, we will come up with the question of, okay, when we had two random variables, x and y, we, we got a very clear idea of what their correlation represents, yes? But when you have a process made up of, let's say, n random variables, t, let's say, takes on, let's say it's discrete, uh, and it takes on n, like 100 values, how do you define, what is a meaningful uh, definition of covariance that becomes useful for us? You can define many, uh, many measures or something, yeah? But you also have to see, is this measure useful to me or not, right? So, uh, this is the roadmap for uh, today's lecture and probably the next lecture. We'll see how much we're able to do. Uh, 
<clears throat> First, we have already done the four cases, uh, got some idea. So let's go to the first part, the distribution. When you go from random variable to random process, you go from distribution to distribution families. Okay. So, firstly, what happens now is that you're not just talking about a distribution, you're talking about a family. What do we mean by a family? This marker is too new, so we need <coughs> maybe this one. Let's see. <coughs> so, for a single random variable, we had x distributed as, let's say, if you remember, we'll just talk about one, then the rest, you know, the, how they are linked. Yeah, discrete case can you say the cumulative one, let's say. How did we define it? Probability of x less than or equal. Yes, this yes. was for random variable, no t index. Remember, I said we will mostly shorten this to this or this. Okay, we will not always write this whole thing. Most of you will shorten it to here. At the moment, I haven't written anything, so I'm talking about one random variable. What happens when you have a collection of random variables which forms the random process? X t, t in some t, let's say <coughs> like that. Okay. Then what is the distribution of this process? Now, when we go to a process, there is a family of distributions associated with the process. Why a family? Can anybody guess why? So, while random process, random variable was distributed like this, the process, if you really want to see how it is distributed, you need to know the full family. What does that family include? Okay, any guesses for the first member? The baby member, <laughs> smallest. So, how many? Um, let's say, if, if this is, let's for convenience say this is some discrete k values. Let's say, so how many random value variables are there in this random process? K. Uh, no, if x, yeah, x1, x2, x3, k of them. Yeah. So there are k random. We could have called them x, y, z, but then we run out of alphabet, so we keep it like that. So, <clears throat> each one of those, like x1, previously we might have called it uh, x and this we might have called y, y. Yeah. remember? So, let's say if there were just two, what would be the first thing you would like to know? The distribution of each of them individually. What's the distribution of fx and what's the distribution of fy, right? So, in this family, the first members are their individual distribution. <laughs> that is the CDF, because the PDFs are linked to CDFs, we will just talk about this guy. PDF of x t. This is one random variable. So if you take one value of t, you are talking about one random variable in this random process. Yes, remember? Random variable, collection of random, random. Uh, random, sorry, random process, collection of random, random variable. Variables. Yeah. So, of course, what's the restriction? You're not allowed to pick any t. If you're the process is defined for a set, this is continuous, discrete, in a range, whatever, then of course you are only required to find the distributions for those members. Yeah. So, that's a given. What is that? How do we read it? This is, I don't write it, it's in the notes also. Uh, I'll just say, this is the distribution of each individual member of the random process. Yes? Okay. What else? What would be the second one? If you extend from here and we had two, what did we do next? Probability uh, density mass function. Yeah, those are, um, like we won't go into those, those are covered through, you know, they're linked to this. Yes? But here, um, did we go to joint after this? Yes. Yes? So, this was for individual. Then we had the 
joint guide that how are x1 <coughs> and x2 jointly related yes and we had this fxy xy and we know it's not a simple product of these unless they are independent independent yes okay if they are uncorrelated uncorrelated doesn't imply doesn't imply you yeah. cannot say this yes, yes. <laughs> maybe maybe not maybe. yeah but independence yes that's fine Okay, I'm just taking it. Can't give up if you're away. Maybe try to rock it. Maybe I should have ordered for you guys, but you seem okay. <laughs> so, fine. Um, so, we go to pairs, right? So we ask, okay, what are the joint bivariate distributions of the any two of these? So T1 and T2 have to be in T O. Yeah. So this is what joint distribution of pairs. In a pairs or maybe three or. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to that's why it's a it's a very big family. <laughs> We're just talking about the babies now. <laughs> big boys are coming. <laughs> okay. So. Naturally, here we were limited to just two, so we stopped there. But this is not limited to two. Okay, yeah, three, four. So you can uh, imagine distribution, joint distribution of three of them, four of them. And is this is this one function like this one? If t has let's say a thousand values, these are thousand functions. They could yes. be thousand different functions. Okay. Is this uh, one function? No. no. For every t one and t two within t. This is a different function. Yeah. This is a huge thing. Then there is the distribution of what we call n tuple. You know, we have up to name only yes, quadruple sir. and spin tuple. I don't know, but then you have to just say n tuple. Yeah. So you can imagine uh, we will be talking about then x t two uh, x t n <laughs> and um, x one x one x two x n and what's the requirement of course all of them have to be chosen from okay, where this guy was defined if it wasn't defined you are not allowed to choose that that's all it's just um, like for comparison sake and this is for um, joint of two right yes. any two it's not just two i mean it pairs let's say pairs and this is joint of n Tuples, tuples and it goes up to like whatever finite dimension you can so if you know all of these then you have fully characterized the random process now will come the power of using the moments single me to it didn't feel like why go for it but now we will see okay this is crazy yeah so uh, let's first write it out what do you think this x1 x2 x3 this one let's say we were talking about the quadruple so it would be x1 x2 x3 x4 what are these small x's what do they represent random variable mm -hmm. so let me make the question easier let's say i now want to ask what do i really mean by f x t1 Uh, x t two, x t three, x t four, small x one, small x two, small x three, small x four, equals. If I wanted to write it in probability, what am I talking about? So these are the, the small x one is a value from x of t one. Yeah. Yeah. X two. Exactly. Value of x of t two. Hmm. So because in random variables we have to find some values. So that's why. Yeah, so we are saying, what is the probability that the random variable x t one, this is variable now. Yes. Yeah. Together they form parts of the process or the process, but each one is one variable. Yes. Probability that x t one is less or equal to x one. It could be one, two, three, ten, whatever you want to write it. And x t two is. Comma for us in probability is and basically I'll shorten for that is x two and x t three less or equal to x three 
x to 4 less or equal to x 4. Yes? For what? Is it one? Is it one distribution? No. This is for every t1, t2, t3, t4. So if you observe this, then it's kind of a four-dimensional object that we are limiting from x on that side and that side and that side. Yeah. It can be measured in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Remember, I mentioned uh, for the bivariate when you had the bivariate, the x and y axes were values of small x and small y, and then the distribution was here. Yeah, after that we are stuck <laughs> in imagination, we cannot, but you know, uh, mathematics, we go higher dimensions, in matrices, we go there all the time. Then we talk about their slices in 2D or 3D, yeah. So yes, you're right, <laughs> this is, this is some four-dimensional surface actually, yeah. Okay, <coughs> or is it five-dimensional, five-dimensional, so for it's two you get three-dimensional, yeah, yeah. So this is actually five-dimensional, so. okay. So why why am I showing you this? We're not gonna work with this, okay? For good reason. Why am I showing you this? I'm showing you this. Here, this guy was fine. Yeah, okay. You could work with single variable density functions, no matter how complicated they look. These guys, oof, there are families involved. They, unless they are totally independent of each other. If they are all independent, you know, all you need, you need just one group. Yes. Which yes. one? Singly we can lap of yes. Yeah, yeah, but yes, if they are not independent, you are stuck with quadruples, quadruples, and one cannot give the other unless there are additional constraints. Like if they are independent, then you all can be written in terms of these, so you are good. You can get rid of them basically. All the information is here. But otherwise, there is inf different information each one. How do you work with that? This is where, as I mentioned, moments as the proxy, yeah. Proxy woni jo which you right? The proxy means to act as a representative or in place of. Yeah. So um, here definitely it becomes very useful to work with moments. Yeah. So uh, before we go to that, we let's uh, settle uh, what we mean by uh, independence. <laughs> So in terms of the uh, PDFs or CDF, remember the independence of two random variables was what? F, X, Y, X, Y was separable. separable. Yes. So what do you think is the uh, independence, if you want to prove independence for a random process, what would you have to show? I mean, if you assume independence, things become easy. But if you don't assume, then what would you have to prove to? If they're joined in a uh, distribution is equal to product of their distribution, then it would be independent. Yeah, but which one? <laughs> Pairs, triplets, quadruples, and tuple, which one? If we prove general, then I think that will be okay for all. <laughs> If we prove for, for n, then I guess it will be true for all, I guess. So um, yeah, you're close, but basically you will have to show that f x t1 uh, to x t n and x1, x2, yeah, how many there? x n equals, it is the nth one is separable t1 x1 f x t2 x2 these are products huh? actually how do we write product in math if we want to write dots it's in the center yeah that represents uh, products so <coughs> in if you use latex you have c dot for that Sometimes students still put lower dot, central dot. Okay, so f x um, t n x n. This you have to show, but for what? Hmm. You have to show that this holds for every x one, x two. Yeah. If you show it for one set of values of these, like ten, five, four. If you show it, it's not enough. Yeah, it has to hold true for all values of. Excellent. 
it has to hold true for all t1, t2 and tn. To show for one set, it's not enough. Okay, so then because it's not saying t1 is the first value of the random process, you are labeling it, so it could be any any n values basically. Yeah. Okay. Then you have to show that this holds for all n, uh, but not requiring infinity because that also will labeling <coughs> for our ease because it might be discrete time and continuous. With that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the way we are writing is general. Yes. yes. Um, but notice that even showing independence becomes a headache. We have to show that this thing holds for all x, small x, for all time instances possible that you want to choose, and for all size of this, t2, t3, uh, for n equal to 1, it doesn't make sense because then you're talking about just one random variable. But 2, 3, tuples, quadruples, all that, you will have to show. Again, this is too much. Yes. So, in most cases, either you assume random processes or you prove that they are un the, uh, the variables there are uncorrelated. Uncorrelation works with second moment. It is weaker, but for many of our analysis, it is good enough. Yeah, You could go back to this and try to prove it, and in some cases we do. But otherwise, again, it's bringing us to the point that it's a... <laughs> It's a more efficient uh, idea to work with uh, moments. So, okay, then let's go to moments for random processes. Yeah. So we have talked about moments of random variable. Luckily, we won't have to spend that much time. We can go fast. It's just an extension now. We have already spent good amount of time on setting the foundations yeah we didn't need to spend so much time on just the mean but i did wanted you to have it cleared once and for all yeah now when we extend it it's no big deal it's just um, many means so that's it so let's start with an example so for moments now um, we already went from distribution to distribution family. We went from independence to of two random variables to independence of n random variables in a process, meaning the independence of the process itself or parts of it. Now we are going in moments from Rv to Rp, yeah, random variable to random process. So I go back to the example I normally give: height of next five students um, entering. So their heights x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. This is first student, second, third, fourth, fifth. Each one is a random variable. variable. Yes. Okay. So uh, together they form a random process. Yeah. So one of their, let's say, um, in one lecture, their realization may look like, like after we have actually measured the heights of the first five students. In one of my lectures, it may look like this. In the next lecture, will it look the same? No. no. It may look like, let's say, something like this. Yeah? And you can imagine so many more. Yeah. Each one of these, we will call what? I already mentioned in some point, but since we are not talking about this, one realization yes, of the random process. For random variable, when you throw a die, one appearing, two appearing, three, each one is a realization. But there, how was the realization? If you're throwing the dice only once, uh, sorry, wearing only one dice, uh, the realizations possible are one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, what it goes like? Here, because it's a process, it can take many different shapes. So what kind of questions, statistical questions, can we ask about this random process now? Any thoughts? <laughs> what would be the expected heights of five points that can be asked? Yes, good. And, uh, so 
what is the expected height of each one uh, all all matlab that are coming from the expected realization we can ask okay yeah good what else variances so let's start with the, the distribution let's say we we might be interested in asking how are they all distributed yeah so we may be asking okay what is the distribution of each of these 40 yeah it's not given yes. that in a random process each random variable will come from the same distribution one may be coming from gaussian another may be coming from uniform, uniform. yet another may be from poisson or something so your problem will define this yeah doesn't that that complicated usually usually they are from the same <laughs> distribution but they may come from distrib same distribution but with different parameters gaussian is not one yeah it's a family um, this is gaussian but so is uh, this one yeah as long as they follow this e minus formula they are both gaussian what's the difference mean and variance are different uh, in this case mean is same variance is different yeah so they might come from the same type of distribution like both all are gaussian but then parameters might be different or they might come from the same type with the same parameters that's we don't know yet yeah in this case what would you say by just for curiosity now uh, what i want you to see is that once we go to random processes this is a natural question to ask uh, for your random process, how is every member of the process, which is itself a random variable, distributed? And we are telling you we are not putting any restrictions that they have to come from the same distribution, right? Then, of course, uh, this, but in this case, what's your guess? Should they come from the same distribution? Heights are usually, you know, Gaussian, normally distributed, Gaussian distribution. And we have no reason to assume that uh, one person is a student, a girl, or there is female. We don't know that information. So at least in this case, most likely they will all come from the same, same distribution, the uh, heights that we expect humans to have. So there is a bell curve uh, for, you could restrict it to those in Pakistan. But still, within that, you cannot distinguish between any two. You don't know. You know, so at least in this case, uh, we feel they will come from the same distribution. It's Gaussian, and their mean and variance for us will be same. Yeah. So that's there's not a requirement, but at least here, that's the case. Then we may be interested in asking, okay, how n of them, any n of them are jointly distributed. We may be interested in asking or learning that question so we maybe want, want, it, want to know that xt1 um, yeah xt2 xtn any n of them like two of them three of them joint basically yeah it's basically the same thing but uh, the one i showed you in families but now i want to show you with the example here it will become more clear so we may want to see okay what is their joint distribution meaning <coughs> f x t1 x t2 x t3 x1 x2 x3 i'm not saying this we are only interested in three of them i'm saying this is one question you may ask okay what else can we ask are they independent yes yes so in our case by the way are they independent in this example they are there's no reason to think that <laughs> they would be dependent although some people may argue that since most likely all these people were brought up in pakistan they are from the pakistani gene pool uh, they are <laughs> somewhat dependent but uh, that only mostly affects the bell curve the, the bell curve of the whole world might be this but pakistan's bell curve will be a bit different but within that it seems there is no reason to think that they are affecting each other's height <laughs> in some way. Yeah, so they are independent. But we will, we may have to ask that question. Are they independent or not? What's next? Then we come to your, what you already mentioned. What are the means and variances of their underlying distributions? 
each one is allowed to have its own distribution yeah so let's call this fx1 this is distributed as fx2 they may turn out to be the same distribution with same parameters in special case but in general each one is allowed to have its own distribution distribution so we may be wanted to ask okay what is the mean and variance of this based on this distribution yeah so how would we write that now <coughs> in a general case first let's say <coughs> if i want to write e of xt yeah remember we have previously discussed a lot this ex yes. right now we are adding this t here yes so we had a name for it we called it mx or some mostly mu x yes what about this guy can we call it mx or do we need something else mxt mxt so we need a time index so uh, from here on we will write it like this whereas this was the mean value this is mean value function function meaning function of this kind what is it saying t means expected value of xt so m1 would represent expected value of x1 in this case the first random variable yeah m2 x2 depending on uh, how your t is continuous to discrete but in this case it is the remember this guy now each one has mean and variance associated with it yeah mu x1 and sigma x1 square this one has mean and variance associated with it they might be same but for general case it, they might be different okay so then uh, what is this representing it is picking up each of these values one by one that's it yeah so this is mu x2 which would, would be represented by m2 in this case yeah so whatever your t index is and i've already included variance so the variance of xt would also now become a function yes yes so we will we in your book at least we are using this notation and this is called the variance function completely wrong spellings but anyway variance function what is what does it mean the variance of the underlying distribution of the tth member of your random process okay so this will come in handy at some point because um, when the time index comes in sometimes students confuse uh, they just assume that all of them will have the same variance or same mean <coughs> let's suppose sir, we have a graph of all these distributions uh, like gaussian distributions then uh, in general what we can conclude of these graphs agar hum graph har kisi ke banenge gaussian hoga kisi ka narrow hoga kisi ka odd hoga aur kisi ka wide hoga but kya hum unki bhi expectations wagaira jo hum calculate karenge unka bhi expected graph is tarah gaussian banega ye puchna ja raha hu of the expected value um no no doesn't have to be kyunki sare random variables gaussian show karenge to unka jo expected graph banega that will be also gaussian not expected graph um see expected value does not talk about the density graph right uh, if you talk about the realization that doesn't include that graph yeah so um it doesn't represent um, um a graph itself you know mean is something very different it takes away in its very uh, basic form the mean itself is not a random variable <laughs> yeah you do x p x sum it up you covered everything you get one value yes. that's not a random variable there is no concept of its graph itself mm -hmm. okay so just think about it but um, um, so basically we have gone from <laughs> random uh, mm -hmm. sorry mean and variance to mean and variance mm -hmm. functions now comes the more interesting bit remember we also talked about variance of 
or the covariance of two random variables. Yeah, variance of them together, covariance. Yeah, so there we had this covariance formula. So we may be interested in asking how do any two of them <coughs> relate? Let's see. Is there, we may be interested in asking, okay, is there <coughs> a linear statistical dependence, meaning a covariance or correlation between one, the S, I think I wrote here, one member of the random process and another member <coughs> of the random process. Yeah, so let's say a random process occurs here and the S member is here and the Th member is here. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is whatever member we have here, how is it correlated with, is there a statistical linear dependence between these two, okay? So, for example, if there is one realization that goes like this, I'm saying XS and XT, but this is just one realization. Yeah, when you talk about covariance, you are going to take combined effect of all the realizations. But what is this saying now? It is saying, remember we had X and Y, any two random variables. We said the covariance between X and Y shows the statistical linear dependence between X and Y. Now we're not restricted to two. We have this, or in general, as I said, it's X, T, T is in T. That's a huge family, yeah, depending on T actually. So it's a general family. Now what do we talk? Is it enough to talk about just the covariance between X1 and X2? Or do we also want to talk about between X1 and X3? We could, yeah, yes. X1 and X4, X5 and X4 x5 and x3 how many do we talk about so we need a more general function now yeah and this is the general function we will call it the <coughs> um, sorry r s t okay what is it saying what is this function it is saying firstly we call it the covariance function cvf covariance function and now it is a function, here we didn't need a function because there were just two random variables, so we just had some covariance between them. Yeah. Now it's a function, and what it does is, it gives you, okay, what is the covariance between the s and the t element of my random process. So why are we interested in that? We will come to that uh, later. Um, we will have some examples here. Uh, as in this case, why did we want to find the linear dependency? It helps us. Uh, we're dealing with random things, yeah? Yes. But if we can talk about covariance between them, and then we observe one of them, if the covariance between them is high, then our guess about this other one becomes more accurate. Yes? yes. Because they're highly correlated. Information about one tells you with high confidence some information about the others. Yes. If they are not correlated, nothing there. Nothing. No, no statistical information there for you. So similarly here, in a process, we are often interested in finding, hmm, is, is the S, is the Th point more linearly dependent on this point, or this point, or this point, or this point, or a future point? Which one is it more linearly dependent on? or is it not linearly dependent on any of them? That information will help us plan. Okay? That information will help us design. For example, if there is a random process <coughs> that whose, let's say, uh, I think we have an example, we'll come to that. First, let me complete this one. Uh, you see the what, what it means now? Yes. It is still it is still covariance two between two points, two random variables. But those random variables themselves can be anywhere on the process. This is one realization. In general, I shouldn't draw anything. It's just xs is here, xt is here, some value it has. So it will give between any two. So you, if you want correlation between x1 and x3, 1, 3. Yeah, and we will see later that 3, 1 has to be the same. Yeah, so it has to be symmetric. 
uh, you want between 1 and 5. So 1, 5. Right. So you will get the covariance function. I'm not saying how you get it right now, how you solve it or generalize it. We're just right, defining it at the moment. Then there is the our friend, the normalized one. Yeah, we are not get yeah, rid of this guy. <laughs> Correlation yeah. function. Yeah, yeah. Are often called autocorrelation function. Auto because this is the two uh, two variables in the same process. Later we will see uh, two variables of two different yeah. processes. Yeah. That will be called cross correlation. Yeah. This is autocorrelation function. By the way, this is also sometimes called autocorrelation function in literature, but um, you will know from the context. So, how would we define it? Any thoughts? Personalization of covariance. Covariance of x of x uh, over divided by variance. So, can I write this? Yeah, I can? Yes, yes good. And variance of? Variance of x of x and variance of x of x. And I can write that as? R is <laughs> yeah, so I can write all of this in terms of the covariance function. Yeah, and of course, square. Yeah, there are many ways to write it. I just wanted to write it like that. Okay, and this is what the normalized covariance function, which we call the autocorrelation function. Uh, when we drop this, we are usually assuming then that this is same random process x whose sth value and th value you are talking about. But you might be interested in finding, okay, I have two random processes going on and I want to see <laughs> there is another random process. Uh, let's say one realization is here and the other is here. And I'm interested in finding the uh, xs correlation between xs and x, uh, sorry, yt. Yeah. So I, I might be interested in finding the correlation or covariance between x, s and y, t. Yeah. So in that case, we will have to write the subscript. Because if we skip the subscript, we are assuming same. Yeah. So if we have to, if we are dealing with two different, then we have to write. Okay. So then we are saying the cross covariance between x and y where x is at point s is and y way. is at point t. t. Yeah. I want you to be able to visualize this from here on. Okay, I could just write these formulas and say this is what it is, but always try to visualize what you are talking about. You are saying how much is the value of y at time t linearly dependent on the value of s x at time t yeah and <laughs> and of course if s is equal to t this does not become variance now because x and y are now different random variables okay so let's see um, as i said there is information we are all of uh, the whole story of probability and random processes where did it start one thing, lack of information. That was the whole issue. Yes, some uncertainty. So, knowing that something is correlated so is information. In the same sense, uh, if in a cross correlation function, uh, if all the values are the same, means they are highly covariant for all the points S and T, then the graph of both process will be same, I guess. A uh, graph of both <laughs> processes will seem. Uh, no, graph. You mean one realization? All real. I mean, the same values. The x key level here, the same values. The t key level, and the same. Hoti, highly correlated. Hoti. So then. Um, no, not really. It's uh, that's the trick. So you're talking about all values of this uh, process. Yes. Sir. Where are all values of this process? If we select from all values from this process one by one and you mean these values yes. but these are not all the values of this process it's just one realization you know how many values it has <laughs> it will pick one by one that doesn't have any meaning for us so actually a random process uh, this one realization then this is another realization then there is another realization depending on how much variance it has and what it's mean it will have many realizations 
and all of these are xs the value of xs here with probability whatever its density is the value of xs here whatever probability it has all this <laughs> it was spaghetti and all of it this is the process before it happens after it happens it converges to one that's one quantum interpretation uh, of the universe before we observe it it's in a superposition state you know before you observe uh, an electron before you force it to interact with something it's a superposition it's in this state confused state fuzzy as soon as you try to detect it or make it interact with something it converges to one point <laughs> okay try to read uh, this uh, quantum uh, physics uh, interpretation and it's very interesting by the but here now all of these are what you are saying is actually this <laughs> now this guy also has its realizations yeah and when we say that xs and yt are highly correlated we are saying that when among these realizations when xs goes above its mean then yt also goes above its mean every time or below its mean but it cannot switch then it will be zero See? <laughs> so when you talk about graph in a random process it has so many meanings are you talking now where is the density graph here you know let's say i tell you that xs is distributed as gaussian with mean 0 and variance 1 you know where is the graph of that the density function pdf the gaussian where is it you know it's in this dimension here wo aise ek topi banayi hai can you imagine like aur uska mean to 0 pe nahi lag raha ye to kahin aur lag raha hai to let's say it's radius two or something yeah so each of these can occur in so many places and the with what probability it occurs in each of those if you write out those probabilities collect that as a density function if it's continuous uh, density otherwise uh, distribution function that distribution function will show here okay and then you have to imagine what covariance means <laughs> okay kuch aa raha hai yeah i can show you with dice also maybe that is easier let's say the simple case of <coughs> let's say you are <coughs> you are throwing um, yeah let's say you are throwing a dice uh, three times yeah so we make a random process first time what you see second time third time what you see yes now sometimes students think that this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 values no <laughs> each one of them has six values six values so the x1 can be here 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 or here 1 2 3 4 5 6 x2 can be here 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 x3 similarly like that and now if i repeat this keep on repeating this first time i do three throws maybe i get uh, one 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 that's it. next time i do it maybe i get one two one then at the time i get can you imagine how ye sare us banate hain aapko yeah it goes crazy but you know you are uh, restricted here anyway so those are the realizations what do we mean by mean of ex1 then <laughs> first let's say what do we mean by the distribution of ex1 Now, what is the distribution? What is the likelihood of this one occurring here? Yeah, if I were to plot it in this dimension, it will be one bar of what height? One by six. One by six. One by six. Imagine करें one by six के चले. Why? Because these are coming from the same distribution. Yeah. Yes. If it was uh, this was the throwing a die and this was tossing a coin and giving it zero and one value then they will be different fir wo realization udhar chhed to nahi rahegi iski ek do teen char paanch chhe iski ho jayegi zero aur one 
and then what is possible you will have to draw and then although this will be 666 six, six, uh, 1 by 6 one, this will be half half yeah so the, the this this is the distribution here okay similarly this is the distribution here and the mean of this distribution is ex1 the mean of this distribution is ex2 then what is the variance of that distribution that is sigma, uh, sorry, is that we are calling Vx1, Vx2. Next, where were we? This thing. We may be interested in asking, <coughs> what is the covariance between x1 and x2? That's what we've been writing. What is the covariance between x1 and x3? Three, yes. Like that. So now you see everything we have studied. <laughs> So they find the same process of based on a coin, so then there will be a cross correlation for them between die and coin. Between if we define yeah. another process based on a random Yeah, yeah, yeah. then you will be talking about cross, 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 cross But yes. uh, the cross correlation being there is another question. But yeah, you can define it, but most likely it will turn out to be zero. There is no reason for a coin toss to depend. <laughs> there's no reason yes. unless you're cheating in some way right so yeah you can find the correlation but is it there like is it non-zero uh, yeah. most likely no it's zero so <clears throat> now suppose um, <coughs> just want to show you this uh, why why are we interested in cross uh, sorry in correlation and maybe also cross correlation later as i said in general there's information that information is useful it helps us uh, reduce our lack of knowledge let's say you have a random process x1 x2 x3 um, so on yeah and you want to uh, some way let's say you have calculated i'm not saying how we did it but let's say we found that the correlation between x1 and x2 these two i could write it as one two uh, the st so if we want like this one two meaning uh, you know the correlation the uh, this thing yeah? let's say i find that to be the same as the one between two three meaning the one the correlation between one and two is i find it to be the same between two and three and i find it to be the same between three and four and that is the same up to uh, t and t plus one let's say i find that and it turns out to be 0 0.8 and when i do this for two process two values which are five units apart these are just one unit apart yeah so if they are <coughs> uh, six units one to zero yeah apart and i find that they don't all have to come there but uh, i'll show you what uh, that comes to later but let's say t t plus 5 yeah it is 5 units apart is 0 let's say i found this i had a random process and i found that when i look at two closely spaced random va variables in there the correlation is very high when i look at something that is far away the correlation becomes very yeah. low so wh what does that mean how can that this information help me Parts. The clothes are dependent and the values <coughs> are very much independent. Uh, okay, let's say this. Now you, you have this information, okay, and um, you have observed this random process up to x, let's say 100, okay, and you have this thing. Now you want to predict what will be this guy the next one okay and the statistical information you will use should it be from here or someone farther away from me the closest one is the most highly correlated so whatever model i use should weigh this thing should give more weight to this yes whatever predictor i use should say hmm, because the closer ones are highly correlated i should stick to this, here this. 
actually in many cases we will find that this is falling as you go to let's say uh, d t plus 1 is 0.8 t t plus 2 as you go apart 2 it becomes 0.5 and then t t plus 3 it becomes 0.3 and then it becomes or greater it becomes 0 so you know your estimate of this in this situation should include the last three. Three, yes. Which one should be given more weightage? The closest one. Closest one, because it has the highest correlation. Now, this is uh, this is one thing, but in many processes, it may turn out to be that the closer ones have low correlation. Okay. Let's say you work with a process and you find that T and T plus 100 are always 0.9 whereas all others are very low okay you know what's this showing you this showing you to predict at any time the best value you can try to use to make this prediction is the value 100 points before which we have already observed compared to the closer one and this actually happens uh, often if the process is periodic the process it is random but it's something is repeating itself after 100 values, values. yeah okay. so there's a lot of uh, statistical information in where you are so let me give you an example <coughs> okay so we are i'll give you this just one example of uh, weather <coughs> forecasting yeah so <coughs> suppose we measure temperature of a city for every day for several years Wow, okay. Say we measure it for like 10 years or something. So we measure it for every day. And <coughs> this is day one, day two, and so on. This is day eight. 365 days in a year yeah so we measure this temperature of topi city uh, topi temperature on day one of the year day two january one so on so on yeah. up to 365 days year one how would it look yeah when <laughs> yeah. so it may be something like this yeah then year two doesn't have to look like this yes it may look um yeah something like this then year three yeah so if you have done this for 10 years you have 10 realizations this is now now we're talking about data driven thing yeah so we have collected this data we have this let's say 10 years of data and now let's say <coughs> we may be interested in asking okay are the temperatures of two adjacent days correlated or not Okay. So, in each year, uh, the, the x1 is one random variable and in the 10 uh, years, it takes on 10 realizations, right? So, from there, you could ask yourself, okay, are the temperatures of two adjacent days correlated or are the temperatures of two days, one week apart, co how much are they correlated? What's your guess? Which two would be more correlated in general? <laughs> for weather usually it's the closest ones so we may be interested in uh, asking that and <coughs> then what we do is basically um, you could do the uh, correlation you could try to find a formula for that or you could say okay I will plot x1 against x2 and I'll see I have 10 of these and 10 of these I brought them yeah and let's say it comes out like this high correlation yeah what if i plot x1 against x8 uh, x8 and it turns out all spread out very low or it could be uh, um, more not so clear but a bit fuzzy but still there's some correlation but overall these are the kind of things we do to try to predict or use or identify what part of our data is more useful Okay, so 
if correlation dies out after um, let's say um, 60 days uh, maybe our estimators our predictors don't need to use that old data because there is no correlation left okay so it has information when we come to uh, maybe some basic estimation uh, we will see uh, further how to use it at this moment it's just a very basic first idea about this whole story the whole idea of uh, trying to model all of this was what to design yes to predict yes design itself includes prediction uh, when you design this door of this height you were predicting what most people will not have to crouch <laughs> Right? So, uh, th this, uh, whenever you're designing, you need to make some parameters. You need to assume some parameters which will be useful for the user of that design. And how do you predict those parameters? Weather forecasting, you want to forecast weather. You want to forecast, um, um, let's say, what kind of weather will be on the seas. Uh, Norway has a huge fishing business. So their weather forecasting systems are very advanced. Even in Sweden, I used to look at Norway's um, calculations <laughs> for Sweden and they often turned out to be more accurate because they, they are, lots of their fishing business relies on accurate prediction of storms and those things in the sea. Yeah. So, right, uh, I have to go for a meeting and time is also up.